Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free, and in this video I want to talk about computer keyboards, and specifically we're going to look at mechanical keyboards and some of the different keycaps you can get to personalize your keyboard. And you may have seen from the different computers around the office that I like to use these uh, kind of colorful, showy um, keyboards, but they also have a cool sound to them. So in this video, I want to kind of show, um, spotlight a couple of these keyboards, or we'll jump through each of them real quickly. We'll show the keys that they're using, uh, we'll show off the keycaps, and we'll let you hear what these um, different keys sound like. Um, uh, some of these are using open source software, I might add, like this Atris uh, keyboard that I built a couple of years ago. I actually flashed the software to this directly, it has like an Arduino inside, and it's running an open source firmware that we can get in and modify and change. Um, this little guy here is too running this open source firmware. So this is very loosely um, related to open source. Um, as you know, here on the channel, I try to focus everything on free and open source software. But uh, I feel like since I have kind of a good collection of these, it'd be nice to show and hopefully you can, hopefully it'll pique your interest and you can see if this is something you want to do, maybe upgrade your old keyboard uh, to a mechanical keyboard. Um, so one of the first things I'll say is when you buy just a regular cheap keyboard like this or the keyboard that comes with your computer, uh, it's probably not going to accept these keycaps. Uh, and what I mean by keycaps is you have your actual key, which is what you press down, and it has sort of some connectors on the back that'll tell your computer when that's uh, being pressed. Well, on top of the actual key, you have a key cap. And the key cap just kind of goes over and slides on there, and then when you press that key, uh, it, does, it does the same thing. So the keycap is just sort of like decoration for the key. Well, these uh, keyboards that you get with your computer, they don't have a standard keycap usually, or the key and keycap are usually either proprietary or they're just a cheap, um, non-standard. So if I want to put this custom keycap of a heart onto this keyboard that's just a cheap keyboard, it won't work. And I'll show you why. I'll just pull off one of these keys real quick, like the number five key and we can look at the back of this and we'll see uh, the backs of these are very different. So the MX style has this kind of plus sign and this is the generic one over here. This black one is just sort of, this particular one's like a square boxy one. So this is a non-standard style, whereas this um, MX style is very, very standard. All these keyboards behind me use mechanical switches, which the mechanical switch, when you press it, it actually has like a, like a mechanical uh, a mechanism in there that will kind of, sometimes it can either click, you can get some that have a very hard click and a tactile feel, or you can get some that are very quiet and soft, but in any event, there's actually some, mecha some mechanics in there uh, pressing that, whereas the cheaper keys, when you press it down, sometimes all it's doing is just contacting you know, two wires, it's a little circuit, and you just press on a pad, and it creates, uh, closes that circuit. So that's why it feels different, and then it relies on just a piece of plastic, um, whereas there's a lot of metal components um, in these mechanical switches. I'm going to reposition the camera now so that we can see and hear each of these keyboards close up. This is the smallest keyboard I have. It's a keyboard that I built. It's called the Gherkin. It's a 30 key keyboard. And the way it works, it just has the uh, letter keys and then some arrow keys here, and then you can map it. I forget how I have it mapped right now, but when you hold down a certain key, it changes things to like uppercase and lowercase, or if you hold down two keys at once, uh, it'll change these to like numbers, for example. This keyboard is using a Gatoron green switch for the letter keys, and it's using a, an off-brand red. The brand is New Giant that it's using for these uh, the reds for the arrow keys. So it's kind of a combination. Not a very practical key, but some people use this as like a macro keyboard. So you could put different keys on it. You can put it vertical and use it for like video editing or something. But this is the Gherkin 30 key keyboard. This is the Atreus keyboard. It's also a keyboard that I built. Uh, it's using, I think this is also using the greens. Yeah, this is also using those Gatoron green switches. Um, I really like this one. It's supposed to be like an ergonomic keyboard, so it kind of fans your hands out a little bit, like this. And then just like with some of the other keyboards, you hold down like control to like change things to a number keypad instead, or you hold down, you know, for uppercase and lowercase. These are the enter, the return key, the enter key, and the backspace key. Uh, and then this just has a cool, a fairly inexpensive keycap that I found on uh, Amazon. It's a fun keyboard. This is kind of a popular mechanical keyboard. It's the Poker 2. It uses the cherry red uh, keys, 
which kind of have, uh, they don't have a click to them. So you hear the sound when it bottoms out at the bottom of the keyboard, but they don't actually have a click. If you press it very slowly, it doesn't make any sound. So that's pretty cool. I think I put this Clover keycap on here, and I also did uh, these metal keys for like the WASD for like walking around in games. Um, notice this keyboard doesn't have arrow keys on the side either. Um, and so there is, I forget, you, you hold down one key so that you can use the arrow keys, um, like maybe this PN right here and then it converts these to the arrow keys. This is one I haven't used very much, but it's a fun keyboard, and it feels really nice. It's got really good keycaps, and it sounds pretty good too. This is kind of a cool keyboard. I really like the keycaps. I don't think I changed this one at all. I think this is stock exactly how I bought it. Let's see what keycap it's using. So this is also the red, the cherry reds. Um, very popular, one of the most popular uh, keys is it's just these red, uh, MX Cherries, so it feels really good, sounds really good. I don't have a lot of information about the actual keycaps, sorry, like I know there's different um, types and materials for keycaps, but I don't really know the makeup uh, of these keycaps. But what I like about this one is it does have the arrow keys into the corner, even though it's a smaller keyboard. This is a ducky keyboard, so it's also really popular. Uh, the ducky, this one is using, this is using a cherry switch, so it's a blue and it does have a click, a tactile feel, and a click. They make, um, you can buy like a, a board on uh, like eBay or Amazon that's just full of different types of switches. So you can go through and put keycaps on them and press them and see how they feel and sound if you're trying to choose between a certain type of key. And this one has RGB um, backlit keys as well. So they'll light up and we can see what they look like. I, I think I did do some keycaps. I think I put on these uh, red and purple keycaps. And then there's this ducky key, ducky key and like a ducky space bar that are kind of like unique to this keyboard. I forget where I got this keyboard from. It's actually um, not a, it was very inexpensive. Um, this is one that my wife has been using. This keyboard uses like a generic or like an off-brand uh, mechanical switch, but it is still standard with that MX style. So this is sort of like a blue mechanical switch. Uh, this is a Falcon is the keyboard. It's sort of a cheaper keyboard. Um, this one has a couple like a, a Dota, custom Dota keycap on it right here, as well as like a backlit uh, heart keycap. So these are kind of cool. And then it also has uh, some colorful keycaps here. This is sort of like a rainbow. So this originally was all black keys, and so we took off the black ones and put this rainbow and these pink keys over here for the keyboard. This is a nice mini keyboard, so it's 49 keys. And um, I just put these blue arrow keys on here. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this one uses either. This keyboard is using the Gatoron Brown key which the Gatoron Brown also doesn't have, it has a tactile feel, but it has no click. So I can feel this when I press down a key, and it, you hear it when it bottoms out, but it actually has no click to it, just the tactile feel. This is a fairly inexpensive keyboard too. I'll see if I can find the link for it and add it in there. This is an older Rosewill keyboard, and I've had it for a long time. If I'm not mistaken, it uses the uh, cherry black keys. Yeah, so this is the black, um, the black cherry, which I actually really like these. Um, they don't have a tactile feel. They're kind of a more soft uh, key. Um, so there's not really sound other than when it's hitting the back plate. And there's also no tactile feel, but I just really like these. And um, this is a cool keycap too. I think this was, I forget what it was called, but I'll try to include a link to it. These ones don't have any printing on them, so you can feel where they were, you know, to get your fingers set on the home row. But other than that, there's no, you kind of got to just know what the keys are. Um, so it's a really cool keyboard. Very heavy duty um, keyboard as well. This is kind of a cheaper novelty keyboard. It looks like an old typewriter. The key it's using is some sort of an off brand. Um, it's got a clicky, uh, clicky, very clicky feel to it and a clicky sound. This one's kind of weird to type on. I don't love these keys. You can just pull them right off. Um, without the keycap because they're they're round and easy to grab onto, but they're very plasticky and light feeling, and it doesn't feel really great. But again, it was it was a pretty cheap keyboard. Here's a keyboard from Red Dragon, also a fairly inexpensive keyboard. 
This is my daughter's old keyboard. I got her these uh, pink and white keycaps, and she put them all on herself. Um, this uses like a blue type of off-brand uh, key. What I like about this keyboard is it has the volume knob over here and the media controls built in also, as well as some like hot keys that you can program uh, over here. It's very loud. It's also kind of dirty. I should probably clean this one up. This is a keyboard from Razer. It's the Razer Black Widow. It actually uses a Razer switch, so it has a little bit of a click to it. A click and a tactile feel. This is what it sounds like. And these are all custom keycaps too. Fairly a more inexpensive keycap. Um, the cheaper the keycaps, the, key, the actual keycaps definitely affect the sound. Too. So, just because you have you, you're going for a certain sound, your keycap will affect the sound of it. So keep that in mind. This is a completely stock Alienware keyboard. Let's see what it uses. So it uses this Kale brand uh, brown switch, and um, it doesn't feel like it has a tactile feel to it. But this is a little bit more stiff key, and it gives it a good sound though. Also, we have a volume knob. We can mute volume. Uh, we have some different macro keys over here. This is a cool keyboard, though. Kind of expensive, too. I don't know. It's completely stock. Well, I hope you found this video somewhat informative. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and leave some more information and links to some of these keyboards and keycaps in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I look forward to catching you in the next video.